In the fall of 1988, Balthazar was working at an independent record store called Mile of Vinyl. He had moved out of Vincent Tuscalini's apartment and was looking for a new residence when friend Tommy Duhan, also known as DJ Fritz, invited him to move into the abandoned Hass and Cleaver Elementary. The schoolhouse was amazing, just amazing. I mean, you've heard the stories, you know what it was like, it was just those people, those outcasts. strand of lysergic, lysergic acid dithylamide that came around. There were mushrooms too, there were psilocybin, psychedelic mushrooms, there were tons of mushrooms around, we made tea out of them. And there was marijuana. One thing I remember is that even though there was enough room in the schoolhouse, Balthazar insisted on sleeping in this old broken down school bus behind the building. Even in the middle of the Michigan winter, he would still be out there. Oh, and we were just all just tripping constantly, just seeing things, banging at the moon. Once Balthazar heard the music being created by Avery, Fletcher, and Miles, he instantly wanted to join in, begging them to give him a chance as lead vocalist and frontman. When asked all these years later why he wanted in so badly, Balthazar's answer was simple. Because it was good. It was good songs. The songs were really good, it was quirky, it was strange. He was persistent, so we just, we finally just gave him a try. Uh, I thought it was just going to be a joke, but it turned out, I mean, it turned out okay right away. You could tell that um, he fit in with us, I don't know why. And it definitely took us from, you know, to another, another level, definitely. As a performer, I mean, we already had the songs, but we needed somebody out there to present them better, or I don't think we ever would have done anything. We were real lucky to find him. Balthazar had this massive record collection that he had stolen from the record store. And Fletcher and I would just go in and just take whatever we wanted. Stuff like the Trogs and 13th floor elevators and stuff, I was real into that. Balthazar turned us on to all kinds of new music that we had never been exposed to or never heard of. As somebody once quipped, the next time you get your oil changed, ask the guy who does it if he knows who the Velvet Underground are, and he'll say, huh? The guy really wanted to write songs, and it's not like we held him back and said, no, we said, sure, bring your stuff in, you know, we'd love to hear it. And then he played it for us. This time you came aboard, my ship did to get filled, and the water all around came swirling into it, and we were sunk on And they had to cannibalize each other just to see. He only played for, for a minute before Fletcher just put his hand up and said, no, no, we're fine with Avery's songs. And I think that's, that's kind of where the friction between them started. Yeah, one thing uh, Avery really wanted to do, he wanted to add that kind of 60s jangly guitar in a lot of stuff. So um, I would leave a lot of strings suspended. And R.E.M. did this before us, but um, we, we adapted it to some of the songs, like, uh, like, we, we to play all these strings, like, and all that kind of jangly stuff, I used to do that all the time, I haven't played guitar in a while, but. We knew there was something interesting going on, we knew we were making good music. And it was cool because it was so underground, I mean, that was all, every, every state, you know, in the mid, late 80s had their little scene. Some of them were well-known, some of them were not well-known. And that was part of it. That underground American rock from the 80s is completely ignored. I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I'm looking around, and they do, like, the chart of the history of rock. And it's like there's these huge gaps. We go, okay, the 80s, nothing. Oh, Duran Duran, because Duran Duran symbolizes the 80s, and that's what they say the 80s were like. like oh, my God, there was so much good rock and roll music. I mean, was there anything more rock and roll than the replacements, the bubble surfers, the Husker do, for God's sakes, and R.E.M., the prime R.E.M. albums. Oh, my God. You know, there, there were thousands of bands doing what, what we were doing, and they're probably doing it better. It was April of 1989, and I was talking to DJ Fritz, and there was uh, there, we were having a big birthday party for him, 
and he asked if we wanted to, you know, play at the party. And with that simple invitation, the world of music would never be the same again.